We are here today with Dr. Jennifer Gush. She is the director of the Amakala Foundation and she's the principal educator for coaching for conservation based here at the Amakala Game Reserve in the beautiful Eastern Cape. Welcome. Thank you. Jennifer, can you please tell us how it came about that you are now the, prin the principal educator for coaching for conservation? Um, so, Coaching for Conservation started in Botswana, where they um, concentrate on predator and human interactions. And one of their sponsors is Investec. And Investec were looking for a project under Investec Rhino Lifeline in South Africa, um, focusing on rhino. And I was in the fortunate position to um, be introduced to Leslie McNutt, the director from Botswana, and was able to join the program. Fantastic. What is Coaching for Conservation? So Coaching for Conservation is an organization that aims to educate children about the environment and about conservation, and basically create children who care about the environment. It's aimed at grade fives, which are 10 to 11 year olds, and it uses soccer as its teaching medium. Okay, so my next question is why soccer? It's a sport that girls and boys can play, um, and it's something that they all relate to. We call it learning from wildlife, and the curriculum's broken up into three sections. We always meet an animal, it might be a rhino, it might be a cheetah, and we learn about that animal as if we're meeting a friend and getting to know them. Then we think about how can we be like that animal in our own lives, in terms of our life skills, and also on the soccer field. So a cheetah runs fast, and, we, and is very balanced, so we can be fast and balanced on the soccer field. If we're being a rhino, rhinos defend their territory. So we would automatically think about defending the goal um, on the soccer field. And then the third section of the curriculum is about helping the animal. So what is the animal's conservation challenge, and how could we help it? So for rhino, the issue is rhino coaching. And how could we help? As a grade five, we can't be part of an anti-coaching team, but we can create awareness, we can tell our families, we can create posters, we can do things at school. Now, you mentioned that it's, it's bringing up a generation of kids that care. Yes. Um, obviously caring about themselves, caring about others, and caring about the environment. Why do you think that's so important in today's generation? Why are we doing this? Um, so, there's a lot of disconnect in this generation with nature. Um, and so, we need children to find a connection to nature, a connection to the environment, so that they feel it's important to protect it going forward as they become the adults and as they become the decision makers. But as well as that, you can't expect a child to protect the environment or respect the environment if they don't respect themselves first. So it's got to start at the individual level. Do I respect myself? Am I important? Yes. Then I can respect others and develop relationships with others and then I can move into the greater world and, protect and be concerned about the environment. And if they've got that connection with nature, if they've got that feeling for the environment, they might not know all the complexities of the environmental issues, but as they get older, they have a feeling of, well, I better find out about this, and I better see, are my actions responsible? Now, earlier we watched you play a game. And I think that game, if I'm not mistaken, is all about this interconnectedness that you're talking about. Yes. Um, why did you choose that particular game? Is it just for their realization to, to show that there's a connection? Um, so that's part of the, of the lesson about rhino, is that it's not just about rhino, it's about all the animals and that they are all connected. So it's a visual illustration for the children that if Right. If we no longer have any rhino, the ecosystem is not as stable and not as healthy as it should be. 
and then if there's another um, negative impact on that ecosystem it's going to start falling apart because quite often somebody will say well rhino is only one species of many so why does it matter and so it's an illustration that yes it matters a lot um, and that there is a sort of domino effect if you like within a natural system now you talk about um, visual games now one of the things I read that Leslie one of the, the key focus is um, the interactive um, ability to be able to make education fun and exciting now why do you think that you are having to take that lead compared to traditional education learning systems currently yeah, I think that more and more people are, are realizing in the education system that it's not just about sitting in the classroom being um, gaining knowledge it's a whole lot of integrating information feelings understanding and concepts so we just feel through this program being on the soccer field playing games embodying the animal there's just so much more learning at different levels that go on for the children without them even realizing it. Now, where do these children come from? So today's children come from the Adder and Kirkwood area. Um, and the class that I've spoken to so far come from Adder Primary School. So they live within 15 kilometers of the Adder Elephant Park. Only one of them has seen wildlife before. One. One. Have they been on their game drive yet? They will go now after lunch. Oh, that is going, that must be so rewarding to yes. be able to see their faces. Yeah. So that is my favorite thing. What is one In of your fondest world. memories? One of my fondest memories and one of my never get tired moments is to be on a game drive with children and for them to see it might be a big rhino, it might be a small hardy dog or an impala and they look at the animal and they go oh! and you just realize that they are just in that moment of seeing that beautiful animal in its natural setting and I never get tired. Oh. Um, I read one of the fundamental principles of coaching for conservation it was a, a quote I think by Leslie said you cannot value something until you know something about it and I think listening to you, that is exactly, you're not just in the classroom, you're taking them out. So it's not just um, the interactive games, it's the, the ability of learning how to do teamwork, that everything is connected, yes. and then taking them out to actually appreciate. Yeah. Okay, and that's where the value and the vision comes, yes. comes in. Yeah. So you can't feel it, feel it, you can't appreciate it by being told. You need to see it and you need to experience it. And so we believe we can do that through the games and the activities and through giving the children the experience in that wild area. Now tell me, Coaching for Conservation, um, where is it? is it? Is it a global organization? Is it How, how did that come about? Okay, with so we'd love it to be a global <laughs> organization and, and it might well be. At the moment it started in Botswana looking at predators and then there was an opportunity to grow it into South Africa looking mainly at rhino but also um, elephant and one or two predators. To, last year we expanded into Mpumalanga in a partnership with the Good Work Foundation. So it's now in two provinces within South Africa. Um, we often have visions of we could take the skills, the soccer skills that the children need to learn to become better soccer players. We can take the core values and the core um, environmental messages that we have in our curriculum and we can actually apply that to any animal. So we could do wolves and bears in America, we could do kangaroos and koalas in Australia if there was an opportunity to do so. Well, we commend you and your team for doing an excellent job and we, we wish you all the best for the future and thank you very, very much. Thank you.